Yo, people, and welcome to Through a Different Lens podcast. I'm your co-host, Joe. I'm Dej. I'm Jacob. And we have a very special guest of us. Would you like to introduce yourself, son? Absolutely. Actually, I'm going to start by saying I'm Dej's cousin, so... <laughs> um, but my name is Damola. So right. um, and yeah, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. In fact, first of all, how's your week on? Because we always check in on each other. So oh, I'll check in with you as well. Yeah. I can't believe it's Friday. It's been a long, it's been a long week. It's mm. been a long week. Life has, um, you know, when you get older and you're like, it's serious business. Mm-hmm. Every single day, there's something that happens. You're like, rah, this is adulthood. This is just one of them weeks, but you know, it's been good. It's been good. I'm glad I'm here. Thank God that we're alive. Amen to that. Amen to that. We love it. But yeah, I'm good. It's been a good week. <laughs> but no one asked me. <laughs> no one asked me, but I'm I'm saying it. Right, no, it's, it's been a good week. It's like ton of good difficulties, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what, what it is. is. Oh my gosh. But well, yeah, we're here. Get me back in. First of all, thank you to the owner of Vanilla Black for allowing us to use this setting again. It's been I'd say about five, six months since we last used it. Yeah, six months. I yeah, time, yeah, literally times flow. Oh yes, yes, yes. We were a grainy camera back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, I was, when I was fresh off the cruise. Yes. Man, I thought he was going to say fresh off the boat, bro. Technically a boat. The way he types. The way he types it. But, but yeah, literally it's been about five, six months since we've last used it. Um, upgraded in camera since then. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to ever check out this coffee shop slash bookshop, it is in Kennan. It's Kennan Lane, ain't it? No. To be pres- oh. Nah, it's Kennington Road. Ah, Kennington Road. Vanilla Black, B here or B Square. And there's a nice little garden part out as well. So, hey, summertime's approaching. You might catch us out summer recording. If you ever need some wine, we've got that too. Hey, couple doors <laughs> down. There's a white shot there. Yeah. Hey, listen, owner's a great man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why not be some to the dungeon, you know what I mean? Well, <laughs> not sure about the team he supports, but you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's life, it's life. But Damala, since you're here and you're, you're our guest, talk us through the brand. Um, well, actually, I guess the first thing, before I talk about anything, we have to taste it. Ah, uh, okay. Then I can talk about it. Okay. Yes, nice, yes nice. I, would, I would love to. Let's uh, actually. Three cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a little sip straight. Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, let's do this. this. This, this smells <laughs> absolutely banging. Strong. Woof. Woof. It's got ginger in it. No. And what you're drinking now is, what you're drinking right now is the mango and chili. Right. That's where the heat is coming from. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I got I got a ginger beer. There's a little, there's a little bit, but we're gonna add some uh, ginger beer here. I do. We've actually got a couple of other flavors: hibiscus and ginger. There's mm-hmm. another one. Uh, we've got a co- coffee, cacao, and sea salt flavor, and then a classic vodka as well. So this one, the mango chili is um, that's a sleeper agent right there. No one is a summer kit waiting to happen. All right. Mix up with a bit of ginger. I love beer. ginger beer, so this is good for me. I'm good. <laughs> I need a strong people. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you very much. So technically, this is a muscle a reveal for me. Oh, this Thank smells you. even better now. Yeah, no, vodka perfect. This reveal because this is African vodka. <laughs> Did you hear that, guys? Africa. Mogadishu, you know. Shout out Somalia. African, African vodka. vodka. Get me. Um, and would you just like to say the name of this? Yeah. So now, now you've tasted it, I can talk about yeah. it. Right? <laughs> yeah. What you can see in front of you here is what we call the taste of Africa. Um... I am myself and one of my best friends from university, Chris Frederick. Um, Big up, Chris. Yeah, Chris, Chris is a great man. If you're watching Chris, you're a great man, remember. <laughs> Big up you each um, and every time. Yeah, we, we, we started this uh, about four and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. The company's called Spearhead Spirits. Uh, and we started this because every bar we went to, restaurant, you know, off license or whatever, you would ask them, you know, have you got anything from Africa? on your menu, your bar, on your shelves, the answer was always no. That's what got you off. I've never actually thought of asking that. No. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a question that most people go yeah. into the shop going, no, like, no. have you got anything from Africa, man? What's what's going on? Uh, but um, for us, we were, I mean, I, I used to work in advertising. Chris worked in banking, but owned a pub 
at one stage. <laughs> um, and it dawned on us that, you know, alcohol is an industry that is very prominent based. So France has got champagne, you know, Britain's got beer. Um, you've got America's got, um, you know, whiskey. Japan has got their own version of whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, you've Keep got different beach. countries and continents that have a representative kind of spirit or, or beverage. When you look at Africa and you ask someone, you know, what is a, a brand that comes from that continent? Not many people have an answer. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, saw what was essentially an Africa shaped gap that needed to be filled. And as, you know, as a Nigerian, um, wanting to, you know, see our country, our people, our continent represented, it was, mm -hmm. it was an opportunity we couldn't pass up. So, um, four and a half years ago, we said, right, okay, let's try and do something. Let's try to try and make a spirit that was authentically African. None of this inspired by, mm. it's like, there's a lot of inspired by stuff out there and you know respect to those guys because it's difficult doing anything at all in this industry yeah um but we didn't want to just be inspired by it we wanted it to be authentically african and that meant for us um you know doing everything on the continent sourcing all the ingredients from the continent and then you know creating something that represents who we are in the kind of contemporary uh modern way which is why you know we started out with the vodka which is called vusa and vusa means awaken in zulu Okay. Um, and actually, so I was in South Africa. Where was it? A few months back, anyway. Oh, sorry, it? sorry to cut you. Just bring the mic a bit closer. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm sure they can hear me now. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're in South Africa now. Um, just you know, doing a few things with the with the with the with the drinks because that's where we manufacture the products. Mm -hmm. So our distillery is based out in South Africa. Anyway, so we're there just doing some market work, going to see some people, having conversations. Um, and there was one guy who was like, oh, why did you call it VUSA? Because do you, you, know, you know what VUSA means, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, well, do you know what VUSA means? No, you, you just don't. No, no, but do you know what it really means? Oh, no. oh, there's another meaning. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so, what's it really mean? <laughs> yeah, that way, what, what, <laughs> I mean, so what is it? You see Magnum, yeah? Mm. I, you know the, the the perception of what Magnum can do for you. Yes. yes. In, <laughs> oh, really? hey. Yeah, enhancing your your performance, and your ability. Yeah. <laughs> Chance. <laughs> so Vusa is a term that is associated with that. So when people say awaken, they mean awaken. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, awake right. yeah, 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 yeah. So awaken is awake, but. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> so they're like, why did they call it that? I'm like, well, you know, awaken your spirit. Right. You know, anyway, so um Visa was the first product we created. We wanted to make something that was that was authentically African. So we used sugar cane instead of grain. So mm. all your favorite vodkas, whatever you've been drinking before, ditch that. But I uh, I'll stop drinking vodka, but this is banging. Uh you see, that's the thing. Like I can understand why you stopped drinking vodka to begin with. Because Typically, vodka is a difficult drink to drink. Mm. Most vodkas are made with like wheat or grain, basically. Um, okay. And the process of producing that creates impurities. And when you drink and you get that little heat in your throat, that burning sensation, it comes to the impurities that are created during the process of production, distilling. Um, but because we use sugar cane, we don't get those impurities. There's a whole bit of science behind that. I won't bore you, but yeah. <laughs> because when you sugar cane, you don't get those impurities, which means you don't get that burn in your throat, which means it's a smoother drink to drink. Very tastes delicious. And, you know, the drinking experience is exceptional, better than pretty much every other vodka out there. Mm -hmm. um, but importantly, it's distinctively African. You know, sugar cane that grows, you know, within South Africa is the sugar cane we use. It's like within eight kilometers of our of our distillery so it's oh, wow. lo locally sourced very local so it's like this stuff is this is this is the real deal mm -hmm. anyway we got the vodka we're like yo this is banging let's see what else we can do then we started to start to make gin mm -hmm. um same principle had to be authentically african um so it's not like um because gin is you know synonymous with uh you know the dutch is synonymous with britain you know the, the huge gin boom um you know, in the past decade, gin is a drink that, you know, people are like, that is a very British thing. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you make gin African? Mm -hmm. We're like, right, let's use a botanical that is synonymous with our continent. So we were like, right, that the, 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 the botanical that made sense to us was the baobab fruits. 
Uh, do you know what you know what Baobab is? Right? Baobab, boy, I'll use it. Okay, cool. You know what it is. Is that this is the thing? Baobab. <laughs> it's powerful. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. That thing they call it the tree of life. It's 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 like the the national tree of Senegal. You see it across the continent from Ghana to Senegal to South Africa. So literally th throughout the continent. Um, but it's a tree that has a huge significance as well. Mm -hmm. You know, every single part of it is useful. Provides shelter. It stores water. It the bark is used for for various things. You get sap from it that's used for for different things. So it's a very resourceful tree. It's a center of a lot of communities for for various um, reasons. Even in Senegal now, um, you know, back 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 in the day, they used to bury their griots. They're like wise people inside the the hull of a baobab tree so you know when a baobab tree right. ages you know these trees you know they grow and they last for hundreds of years mm -hmm. inside of the tree is kind of hollow so back in the day they used to you know embalm and um, you know mummify essentially Bro. you know <laughs> these, these wise these wise people and then you know place them inside this tree that's how significant this thing is Bloody they, they banned that like the Senegal <laughs> <laughs> I'm just about to say yeah, is yeah, this still there yeah, yeah, no no yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> they don't run that anymore yeah, that's, but, that's um, serious practice boy yeah oh, for real um, so they used to do that but anyway this just shows how significant that tree is but the fruit that comes from it is incredible so it's a fruit that's got some well the most antioxidants of pretty much any fruit on the planet so and the antioxidants in it are, you know, more than you'll find in a lot of the citrus fruits that we are, or we are uh, even the blueberry. Yeah, more than that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Blueberry. That's blueberry. that's where you find yeah. like baobab powder. They put it in all these superfoods. Yes. You yeah, go to you these like it. healthy shops and stuff. You go and ask them, can like I need something with baobab powder? Like, half the half the shelf will have that stuff in it because it's that powerful. Mm. It's, it's it's like restorative. Anyway. It also tastes really good. So, you know, sherbet, like you, mm, you like yeah. dip dabs. Now you're talking my yeah. language. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you taste sherbet, the dip dab stuff, the the seeds inside the baobab, when you grind them up into powder, it tastes like that. Okay. We use that oh, wow. in the botanical mash to flavor the gin. So it's got baobab from Ghana, Zambia in it, um, juniper from Kenya, um, coarse salt from the sea pla uh, from the salt plays of Botswana, um, Citrus peels from South Africa, grapefruit, uh, lemon, and uh, oranges. We put that in the mash as well, mm -hmm. uh, and then we seep that in the in in the alcohol, and it brings a flavor. And we've got different flavors of all the products. Um, the one you see here, we brought it out for Nigerian Independence Day because it uses in, in the when we're distilling it, we put a little bit of um, palm wine mm -hmm. and um, like macerated pineapple. So the combination you get like a tropical gin flavor. So we'll open that in a minute. You'll smell it. You're like, rah, this is this is nice. <laughs> but anyway, that was a long story to say. We set this up because we wanted to, you know, create spirits that represented Africa in the way that Africa should be represented in the spirits industry. Um, enjoy the journey, enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. Got a few more products coming out um, pretty soon. Watch the space. Yeah, mm -hmm. African tequilas coming. Jeez. Yeah, it's yep. a serious one as well. Mm -hmm. Serious. Yeah. It's called Shango. I'll tell you that story. I was going to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that one we're, we're very excited about. Because, you know, tequila is a hot product, right? Definitely. Um, 100%. As it's Amigos, there's Aperia. Exactly. Yeah. Um, tequila is kind of my go-to drink right now. So. Okay, I mean, tequila is one of them drinks that people just started drinking properly. I would say in the last five years, it's suddenly become hot. Mm. But in this country, I remember when I was like, when I when I was... Younger than I am now. <laughs> Jose Cuervo. Yesterday, you know, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yesterday. <laughs> see the skin. Um, but yeah, H Jose Cuervo, that was why I used to drink. And I was like, oh, you don't want to be drinking that. It's like, just shot it. That's it. It just, it's fuel. But tequila now is like a serious drink, refined. You know, people sip it. Mm. They're not trying to shot it and just get rid of it. It's like, right, let's actually enjoy this, put it in cocktails. You know, it's a serious drink. So yeah, we, we um, decided to like, you know, venture into that world because, um, well, basically, Mexico is known for tequila. Um, but to make tequila, you need agave, the plants that they use to, mm -hmm. you know, produce the stuff. Um, but outside of Mexico, agave also grows in Africa. Mm. Okay. And people are like, what? How? <clears throat> like, that's crazy. See, but honestly, they don't know that. No, no one, no one. I mean, people hardly know that agave is what? 
is uh, what tequila is made out of. But when they do, no, I, I knew that part, and I just you're a smart man. You're a smart man. When Ken came a few years ago, so but yeah, literally that was my association with like agave tequila, and it's Mexico. People are like yo tequila Mexico, agave Mexico. But what they don't know is that agave grows in Africa, and a lot of it does. Hmm. Um, the only thing it's just not been made or produced to you know create tequila or agave spirit. Mm -hmm. So we're like, well, you have to. We have to do it. Mm -hmm. We have to do it, and. Uh, I think we've got something that's pretty, pretty special. Um, it tastes amazing, looks great. Um, we literally just finalized the label this week. And oh, awesome. It's banging. Cool, yeah, the right time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, it's, um, we're, we're, we're very excited about it. And um, it's already selling in South Africa. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so we did a little kind of upgrade of the packaging. Um, and then we'll be releasing it into the US um, in June. And then the UK a little bit later. So, for instance, with that one, like, already been released in South Africa, did you guys go for, as silly as it sounds, did you go for the release of it or, so the, you know what I mean? Yeah, so we, we, so we, we produced, we produced a liquid, mm -hmm. we, um, you know, designed the bottles, a custom glass, looks banging, uh, made the label, and so we were like, yeah, happy with it, we're like, this is good, mm -hmm. it represents our vision well, um, but I guess with all of these things, until you put it out in the world, you don't yeah. really understand exactly how it's going to land and, um, you know, how people are going to respond to it. Uh, the reception in South Africa has been amazing. Um, but I think there was one one thing in particular that we thought we could improve. And once you kind of pick out that one thing, mm -hmm. the rest of it kind of unravels. So once we did that, we thought, okay, let's, let's just take a step back. Okay. And really kind of assess where we want to put this in the market. Because for us, this is a super premium agave spirit mm -hmm. but we wanted everything you know from the label to the glass to how we talk about it to represent that so we thought okay we could you know just upgrade it a bit so we just you know took it back to the drawing board um and uh yeah decided to switch it up so it's, it's ready i think um yeah it'll do pretty well we hope yeah, but that's like, well if this is anything to go off i guarantee it's gonna do well thank you no i appreciate it i'm glad i'm glad you're enjoying it it's mm -hmm. The, th the problem with this is it tastes too good. Yeah. Uh, it's, dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. The man. smell is... Uh, by the end of the episode, I'll be gone. <laughs> That's uh, why I'm not drinking it. Drink <laughs> responsibly, <laughs> man. Drink <laughs> responsibly. You ain't got to drive, so he can <laughs> do what he wants. <laughs> oh, my drink is sick in there. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but you know what I like about the the African tequila, yeah? Mm. Is the fact that when I had it that day, yeah, I was like, this is too good compared to like all the other ones that's out there in the market because I'm when you release it properly I don't know how you're going to do it but in terms of like price point and where it sits in the community of tequilas as well I'd be surprised man mm. I don't know how you're going to unravel that one what's it's a good it's a, it's a good point we've been thinking about it a lot um it's it's one of those ones where you you want it to be accessible. You want people to be able to enjoy it. We're not going to mm. price people out. Mm. You know, it has to sell. Mm -hmm. And you know, the economy is tight right now. Oh, it's tight. You can't be, you can't <laughs> be picking out a bottle for a hundred dollars and think, okay, people are going to buy this. So you've got, you know, the way we kind of, you know, position it, bring it out. It's got to be well managed. But um, we think it's very competitive in terms of the profile of the liquid and then the price we're going to release it. I think it will it'll be question though how do you even decide the prices because i would say that your vodka is underpriced mm. what is yeah what is the price of this because if i was to price it Tell me. if i was depressed what i've drunk <laughs> what i've just drunk there compared to other things in the market that's a 60 pound plus bowl all right nice see i like that i like it. <laughs> i will take 60 pounds from you right now <laughs> no but that's if, in my in my eyes that's a 60 pound that's literally what i would spend on a bottle like that mm. and okay. if it was to go into a nightclub or something like that that would then be a 500 500 pound mm. that 60 pound that you spent would be a 500 pound but for a, for so a drink true. of that flavor and that smoothness i feel like a 60 mm. pound bottle mm. and price point would be I don't think anyone could argue after actually tasting the drink. And they probably, everyone argues about price before mm. until they actually taste the product and yeah. see what the product does for Very them. Very true. So I feel like 60 pounds, what is the price point? 
I'm going to ask now. <laughs> Tell us 65 pounds. <laughs> You know what? One fifty. <laughs> right. When you're saying this, I'm like, yo, it's too, it's too cheap. Uh, you can buy this on Amazon for twenty four ninety nine. Huh? Yeah. It's crazy. Oh. Seriously, only twenty four ninety nine. I need to look that up. Raw, that's yeah. mad. You know what? Let it's... me look it up myself. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, um, it's 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 very well priced. It's very well priced, and the reason why is when you look at the, when you look at the market. One, you have to be competitive. It has to, it has to be affordable um, relative to other, you know, even on the market. And then, uh, yeah, you, it is. <laughs> there you go. Look at that straight off the bat. Um, raw. That's bad. That, that's it's... definitely a. That's not. I, I, that is not a twenty-four pound nine. That's not a twenty-four nine nine. Especially with the volume as well. Yeah, that that, mm. that there. In my, I understand. The bottle alone is twenty pound. The, the yes, that's what I'm saying. The bottle alone, that's and then you taste the drink and you're thinking, well, I don't want to. I want to drink this every day, but I don't want to drink it every day because mm. I don't want to use it up. You know, and one is quite strong too. Yeah, mm -hmm. like you yeah, don't feel me. it whilst drinking it, but you just know a problem. <laughs> but this is yeah. we can see the volume here. This is the type of bottle you pull out on an occasion. Yeah, yeah. You come round. Mm. Oh, I got something. Yeah, that it's, you have. It's designed too good. I've, that that definitely. That definitely for me, anyway. You see, I'm loving everything you're saying, but there's one very important thing. You're saying, if it was sixty pound bowl, you'd buy it, you'd put it on the on 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 your cabinet for display, bring it on special occasions. I see what you're gonna say. You're only drinking that once every, let's say, two months. We want you to be drinking that every week. Mm. So you come back to buy another <laughs> bottle. You know what I mean? It's like right. If it's if you if you're willing to pay sixty pounds once. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. But you can buy two of those mm -hmm. for the same price. It means you probably buy it more often. Right. You'll probably drink it and not think, oh, I've got to save for this. Every drop is costing me a pound. Like, you don't have to think that way. With That's the point. I understand. So it means it's, it's, it's priced for, you know, affordability. You know, we're a new brand entering entering into the market. We still we have to prove ourselves. People will drink it, be like, oh, that's worth more than twenty four ninety nine. Cool, hundred mm -hmm. percent. Sweet, I'll buy some more, and that's what we want. Right, right. So we can build um, our kind of presence and share in the market by making sure that it's well priced. You know, the economics have to make sense for us as a business, and it and it does at that price, which is great. Um, but I think the interesting thing that you know myself and Chris have learned in going into this because before this. We had never worked in the spirits industry before. This was like, <laughs> this was new. We yeah. learned all of this from scratch, from zero. We had to kind of like figure it out. I was going to say um, quickly, in terms of like the research, how long did it take like roughly until you actually started actioning things? Um, not not that long. Okay. Because I guess both Chris and I are kind of, we, we like to just get things done and, and move quickly and... I think from idea to, you know, liquid, um, like sample, it, it wasn't particularly long, less than a year. Um, Why South Africa? Well, you know, it's, you want to do an African spirits thing. Why not Nigeria? You know the answer <laughs> to that question. <laughs> I think we all know the answer to that question. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I dead you will ride for these people regardless. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we, 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 we just, but... Um, our initial kind of um, desire was to start this out of West Africa somehow. Um, cool. But there were cut, there were a number of things that meant it wasn't possible to to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, first of all, Chris and I had never done this before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily have the infrastructure to kind of go right. Boom! We're just going to go somewhere, set it up, and then and then go. Yeah. Um, secondly, the cost of starting up is you know, is there, you either do it in a place where it's cost effective and efficient to to set something up just to start it mm -hmm. um, and to scale it, or you go, right, it's Nigeria or nothing. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you're taking time and money and effort just to... to oh, the big edge. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I get it. I, I ain't like that, you know. <laughs> I understand. Um, so, you know, for us, it was most effective just to get this started because there's no point having an idea and not executing mm -hmm. on it. So how do we execute this idea quickly to prove that, you know, this is something worth 
investing in and you know building uh so we looked for you know a country that had a few things the infrastructure that we could tap into to create the liquid to then you know actually have a product and then um a country that had not just the infrastructure but the market structure so we knew that right south africa already has a burgeoning like wine industry mm. you know south african wine is a thing so there is a True. infrastructure there that is um i guess accommodating for something like this so we know that right if we want to produce something that we want to sell to the domestic market the infrastructure is accessible um to to, to people like us to do that but also the export you know infrastructure is also there so you could effectively produce liquid bottle it put it on a container and then get it from a to b mm -hmm. south african wine is easily and readily exported every single day by big companies so the, the infrastructure is there to, to to do something at a quality that means you can compete with the best in the world okay um i'm not saying that isn't there in nigeria but it would have been harder for a startup to get to that point yeah right so like at the position we're at now yeah nigeria could be an option because we can we now understand the industry more we know where to look and who to partner with in order to make things like that happen um and find a way to do it at a cost that makes sense for you know economically getting the product to market at a certain price point requires you to do it at a cost mm -hmm. that is sensible so the fact that we can produce something that is 24 99 on the shelf means that you know we can produce it at a cost that isn't crazy right 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 if the cost of production was mad the price would be 60 it's 60 pounds <laughs> you know what i mean it's 60 yeah. pounds and there's nothing else you can do yeah. um and at that at that price point no one's buying the product wholesalers not buying the product distributors is not buying the product from you because they can't make margins so you know we kind of reversed engineered it right from the beginning there's no point in producing something it looks nice tastes good but it's too expensive for all the people in the value chain to kind of get their cut. Um, so South Africa was a perfect place to kind of start this, prove that it works. And in the future, we hope that we can, you know, have a spot in Nigeria, like a, a, a small distillery in Nigeria where we're making this stuff, a place in Ghana where, you know, we've got people can go and visit and, you know, a tasting room with a, you know, small kind of distillery thing where you can experience the process of making buy a Borbusa or, or Shango or, or other products same in East Africa so you know South Africa was the beginning but it's by no means the end and I remember actually Chris and I were it's like one of the first presentations that, that we that we wrote where um, on one of the slides the heading was like like a journey through Africa and the idea was a mobile distillery that started in South Africa and we we traveled through <laughs> the continent from one country to the next, picking up bits and pieces from all the countries and then finishing up in, you know, in Nigeria. Nigeria. And that might still happen, you know, that would be an absolute dream to be I was able to say, that sounds sick still. Yeah. Um, Literally doing a tour. Yeah. yeah Tell yeah, exactly. information at the same time. Yeah, yeah, for real. That would be amazing because, you know, every single um, country on the continent has something to contribute to something like this. Mm -hmm. You know, the uniqueness of the culture um, and, and, and the produce in those places are all things that would absolutely add value to, you know, an alcoholic drink. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one day we'll, we'll end up back home somehow. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, no, listen, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to it. It's going to happen. Who's on the ground? Who's like, so I saw you, so you're UK based. Mm -hmm. Is Chris also UK based? Yep. So who's on the ground in South Africa putting in the groundwork in terms of those sort of things? So we've, we've um, over the last however many years, we've just built a team um, in the different countries that we're in. So we've got an amazing uh, team in South Africa. The, the distillery team is, is fantastic. A master distiller that's a genius, like some mad scientist. The flavors that you're experiencing now, that's, you know, between us and, and him, we're kind of going, right, how can we bring all these flavors together to create something that people would be like, right, this is this is banging. Um, so, you know, we have him and, uh, and the distillery team there. They do the R&D, liquid development, the packaging, all the labels are kind of hand applied. Uh, so there's a team that is basically there do it, doing that. And then um, we've got an amazing kind of, um, um, I guess, director there that, does a lot of our business development in the country so 
that means that you know we're selling in um you know the equivalent of Costco in South Africa is a place called Macro. Actually, you've got Macro. You've got, yeah, got yeah, Macro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know the one in Woolwich. Remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's still there. It's still yeah, there. Yeah. You know what? I was driving past. I was like, "Bro, that's still there." Yeah. I, mean, I remember going in there to get like bags of rice and whatnot. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They definitely haven't gone there for a minute. <laughs> Yo, listen, I've not been in that spot since I was like ten. Jeez. <laughs> I've driven past it, but I've not been inside Macro since I was. Yeah, it must have been ten. Where well, we used to live in Tesby, that was, that was like around the corner. But anyway, yeah. So they've got a macro in South Africa. Um, it's like it's a different set setup, but um, it's like a chain out there. So we're in there. It's a national chain. You can get the products around the country. Um, different stores, bars, restaurants, and so the, you know this guy, Dimitri, he does, he leads that for us mm -hmm. out there, which is amazing. Does a fantastic job. Um, is it in clubs as well? Yeah, so if you go to if you go to um if you go to South Africa, there's there's a there's a, a, a club um called Modular in South Africa. Um and yeah. They're they're doing numbers, man. They're they're, they're drinking it like water there. Because you know with club prices <laughs> as well, like Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just <laughs> crazy. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So yeah, it's in clubs, it's in bars, restaurants, um, shops as well in South Africa, so you know, we've got people on the ground that know what they're doing, that have experience in the industry as well. So, that, you know, they're not having to go through the battles that we right. went through intellectually to figure out this stuff. So, um, yeah, the, t the team is being built piece by piece, brick by brick. Um, we're really lucky that we've been able to, you know, find good people and mm -hmm. assemble this team to help build this. Nice, nice. nice. I, I, I saw... You know, I, I started to see your drink in a few places anyway because I saw it in um, Hawksmoor. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was, really? Yeah. All oh, right, okay, cool. The one, the one in Canary, I was like, oh, right, it's, it's here as well. Oh, you saw it there? Yeah. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was thinking, how, how did you even, like, how do you get it placed in restaurants? You just speak to the owner and be like, oh, I'll just put this, put my you drink in what? there, please. This industry is really, like, it's really mad to me because as a consumer, you don't even think about how something gets from where it comes from to the shop or the bar restaurant you're in. Mm. And it's like, yeah, can I have a vodka martini, please? You don't even, you, you don't think about the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good question. I think it's, it's a very manual process. It is, it's like the ABC of sales. Mm. One, it's a relationship business. It's a people <laughs> business. You're not going to a magazine and going, right, I want that. Because there's so many options. Mm. So in order to get it into a place like Hawksmoor, actually this, that, that story was quite quite interesting. So when we um, when we first launched in the UK, we were working with a PR agency um, and uh, the person at the PR agency that we were working with, Siobhan Quinn, shout out Siobhan. Um, she runs an agency called Hot Sauce. They're doing very well. They represent Skepta. She's smashing it. Mm. Absolutely smashing it, in fact. Um, but yeah, she was, they, they were working with us at the time. And she knew uh, the person who runs the beverage program, the bar program at Hawksmoor, Liam Davey. And she was like, Look, go and chat to Liam. Tell, tell him about what you're doing, taste the products, et cetera, et cetera. And in those kind of situations, all we do, we go and sit down like this pour a drink talk about <laughs> the story talk about the product what's in it how it came to be and basically in that moment they're either going to tell you nah this 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 isn't it mm. or they'll be like oh this is actually pretty good mm -hmm. next thing is what's the price and then you just go through those motions so it's a very manual business you kind of go there you, people have to not just see to believe they have to taste it to understand right and if right. if they rate it if they're thinking right this is something that can work within our our situation, yeah. then they'll bring it on. Um, there are a few more steps and how do you have to go through? But um, you know, when that happens, it's a matter of then, you know, making sure they get the product and then it ends up in the in the restaurant. So it's very much about people have to. You can either do this: you can walk the streets, knock on the doors, and you'd be like, "I've got, I've got a vodka, I've got gin." Mm. Are you are you in the market to buy some? I mean, you could do that with yeah, off-class yeah. and setting. Yeah, 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 we we do that as well. Yeah, oh, okay. So you know, we do that. Every, as well. process possible. Any any which way, emails, slide into DMs, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, 
pound in the streets. Genu <laughs> everything, every single thing. I mean, we were in America a lot last year and you turn up on the streets in New York. I got a question about that, but go on. I'll let you finish. Uh, yeah, on the streets in New York and you're like, oh, that's, that's a cool bar. And so you literally, you go inside the bar, you sit at the bar, and uh, you have a look what they got. You do some analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You've got to <laughs> scan it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scan it. Like, okay, cool. All right. I haven't got anything that is like remotely near this. Cool. Um, and then you just have a conversation with the bar, with the person at the bar. It's like, you know, how you doing? Whatever. Can I get this and that and whatnot? Like I said, it's a relationship. People, people gain, get into the conversation, and you, and then you're like, oh, you know what? Have you got anything from Africa on the on the, on the menu? Every time I say, nah, oh, that's uh, interesting, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I'm saying, what didn't you like to know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah, well, you know, I've, I've, I've got something that you might like. Pull out the bag, boom. If you want to taste it, cool. Let's pour a shot, whatever. They drink it. They're like, oh, that's interesting, cool. How much is it? Oh, it's this price, that price, whatever, cool. All right. Who are you distributed by? Because in America, you've got to buy through a distributor. Like, oh, you know, we've got distribution because a lot of people are surprised even that. They hear the accent, mm -hmm. they hear African what? And then they're like, have you got distribution? I probably expecting to say it. No, I really ain't got it, what you do. And then they're like, oh, yeah, no, we're di distributed by Wine Bow, it's a big distributor, cool, oh, okay, cool, sweet, all right. Mm. Exchange card, whatever. And then we, you know, connect all the dots and then that happens. So it's literally, that's, that's a way to make it work. And we've got, that's what our sales team do. They go out to the places where we want to sell the product to, you know, make those connections, have those conversations and sell, sell the product. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's, it's very much like we call it hand to hand combat. <laughs> yeah. Really. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been incredible to learn and relearn how to sell because in my previous world, like in advertising, my job was about persuading people. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what advertising is there to do. So you got a bit of a head start. A little bit, a little bit. You know, it's, it was a fantastic, you know, training ground because I spent my days, um, you know, designing presentations and and presentations that were there to persuade the person you're speaking to, your clients, that this was the right way to communicate and build your brand and all of that kind of stuff. And essentially, it's sales mm -hmm. in one way, shape, or form. So it, it really helped actually because I can go into a bar now, tell the story, and then. You don't leave there until you ask a question. So, are you, would you like to buy this drink? Mm. Are you? This is the price. Don't worry, I'll I'll chuck in an extra bottle for you. Fair. Cool. Um, so yeah, it was a fantastic training ground going through that experience, and then being in a position to now sell a physical product, which is quite different to selling a you know an an advert idea. You know, it's, it's interesting you said that. It's like you got in in sports in the way we put it. We uh, talk about like ten in, in anything ten thousand hours mm. to get be a master of something, and it's interesting how you put it into perspective. You got your in your journey up. It felt it felt like you got your hours in learning how to do something you didn't even know you were going to go into. Mm. Yeah, and then you can see now what it's led to. Yeah, there were definitely hours put in. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Trust me, like, and every I, th I think. The one thing that I, I realized actually is that everyone's experience or journey is different, but along that journey, you learn lessons. Um, and a good thing to do, acknowledging the fact that every single thing you do, there's a lesson in it. Mm -hmm. Take stock of what that lesson is, write it down. I've got a book of the lessons I've learned in my career and I was just like, okay, cool. It's good to reflect on that um, every now and again. And, um, and then think about how you apply those lessons to your current context and um yeah work it, so i worked in banking to start with um yeah well, that was private equity but that gave me kind of financial acumen business acumen called in stay there for very long hate finance so it uh, lasted two years i was like now i'm done i'm out but it taught me a lot and then marketing working in advertising that taught me a hell of a lot worked in the startup for a short period of time that also kind of gave me insight into the startup world and the kind of things you need to expect and also experience went did back you, into did you enjoy the advertising aspect compared to like finance like, oh and no, i love that big difference i loved it oh yeah that's no, no, completely different you're working with different types of people yeah it's creative um i kind of in, i engage a different part of my brain as well so uh it was it was what i was meant to do mm -hmm. i just didn't realize it when i was like chasing money i'm going like i'm gonna work in finance 
straight out of uni. But um, yeah, the, the, the world of advertising was great to me. And I think, you know, I'll always have my foot in it somehow because of the, you know, the job we're doing now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I apply all of those skills. So I still feel like it's, it's constant advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah don't, it don't even stop. Yeah. But we all do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah communication. It's yeah. Communication is all about persuasion at the end of the day. You don't know what, sometimes you don't realize you're doing it. But it's going in my quotes. Oh. Nah. Don't worry. It's going in my quotes. Still. I'm not charging you that. <laughs> 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 to the game. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about communication, persuasion, and empathy, like understanding what people need and then find a way to position what you're doing in the, that connects with that need. Right. Um, and so, yeah, learn, learn tons from previous careers and, and, mm. and jobs I've done. And it's, it's, it's helping me now, for sure. What, what would you say has been your biggest ob- obstacle or hurdle throughout like, the whole process of creating these drinks? So... You know, one of these days, I've got to get Chris to get, come on something like this. Mm-hmm. Listen, get him, like, bring him, bring him, bring him on. <laughs> you know what? I'd, I'll call him now. You know, I should, <laughs> I should dial him in. He would have a very, he would have a very different answer uh, to me because on his side of the business, and I think it's, from my perspective, the more challenging side of the business, which is the operations. Like, how do you get a bottle from South Africa to a warehouse in New Jersey and mm. making sure that warehouse in New Jersey can get that product to your distributor at a certain price along that supply chain. That's crazy to me. And he's, you know, he's a genius. Um, and, you know, I think that that has been an integral part of why this is, you know, got to the stage it's, it's, it's got to. Um, so the hurdles that he's experienced, completely different to the hurdles yeah. I have. I remember actually there was one day this was during the pandemic. He called me. I was, I can't remember exactly what I was doing at the time. I was in the house. He called me. It was like, there's however many bottles and or cases of um, products in a shipping container. That container's already left um, South Africa. It's on its way. I think it was to France. But they don't have the right documentation. No, but they don't have the right forms. And if it lands, and for us to get the product off that container, we'd have to pay some crazy amount of money. Yeah, like customs clearers tax. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. None of this was our fault. <laughs> we provided all the right information. <laughs> all the right information. And it's like, okay, we, we get told. This is the advice. This is what you need to do. Cool. Everything on our side, legit. Mm-hmm. As far as we were concerned. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, this stuff is not going to clear customs with the information that they have, the documentation that they have. And you don't take the hit directly, basically. The, the kind of hit that would sink the business before it barely started. Uh, I miss. Jeez. So you think in that situation, what do you do? Mm. We solved the problem, but that's the kind of, you know, those are the kind of obstacles that you have to overcome. Like Suez Canal, there was a whole shipping crisis mm. as we're starting up like, the business at this delaying product getting from A to B. That's like logistics madness. When you've never, you've not worked in shipping before, mm. not worked in logistics, so you have to figure out how to get a container from A to B and there's a shipping crisis yeah. during a pandemic. <laughs> you know, like, oh, that's crisis. crazy. Or like in South Africa, there's a prohibition. So you can't physically move alcohol. alcohol. You can't put it on the truck. Yeah, that's true. And we're starting to do trying to start up an alcohol business in a pandemic when there's a prohibition in the country in manufacturing. They'll start treating it like moonshine. No, for real, that's, that's Smuggling. <laughs> we're like, okay. Riots outside the distillery where they're ransacking everywhere. My goodness. I'm not sure if you remember, there was all kinds of political upheaval in South, South Africa at the time riots and all kinds of things horrible things we saw terrible terrible things mm-hmm. and you're thinking there's a distillery there with all of our dry goods that we're just about to launch this stuff in into america and at any given point in time it can just go crumble down do that. all of it but for now <laughs> but on it, and this is and this and this is why i tell you what prayer is important have having prayerful people in your family is important man, man. i'm yeah. telling you because you know, I'm not a prayer warrior. I, you know, I say 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 a prayer myself. Um, you know, more time. But when you have like 
prayerful people in your family, you know that that prayer is that's it's it's, it's giving dividends <laughs> and it's covering you because <laughs> every other place was touched, that place was untouched. Wrong. Mm. That place was untouched. All of our stuff in there, boom, could have gone, could have burned that thing to the ground. Business is done before you know started. We even start. Yeah, that's just the grace of God just covering our backs. So no, this for is real. possible. For real. Um, I remember actually when we were. So we, um, like in this process, we had to raise money and all this kind of stuff, like get investors. Went to America one time to to have like a big investor meeting. And um, I remember, I think I was in the taxi or we'd arrived at the office. And I was like, I said to Chris, look, we need to pray. <laughs> he, he, I, I, he looked at me like, Chris, come on the show. Yeah, <laughs> we need, we need to, we need to pray. And it's moments like that. I'm like, yo, you like, you can't, you can't forget God in these, in these things. Cause no, honestly, it's mad. But um, yeah, th- those are the kind of obstacles that we have to kind of overcome, big and small. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily call them obstacles or hurdles. Um, just the necessary things to do business the cost of doing business is what we call it and you know not all of those things are financial uh, as human cost and uh, and uh, various other things but uh because with certain things you will have like contingency plans for to an extent mm-hmm. but then when you just describe like that first shipping incident for instance mm-hmm. i'm guessing there's no backup plan yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's no backup plan you never thought of oh all my, all my cons is that gonna be a con now nah. Yeah, it's not, it's not you, there. you don't think of it at all. Yeah. Like life happens, the world happens, and you're at the mercy of, you know, world events. Yeah, you're just a small piece, and nobody cares if you're trying to do something. It's like, well, that's true. You're in life with everyone else. Yeah, you know. So, yeah, it's been a crazy, crazy journey, and the obstacles, to be honest, they're paying into insignificance when you think about everything else happening in the world. It's small. Mm. Yeah. This is significant. Well, obviously, to you. you oh, that person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> time, you're like, you're like, my life is crashing down. <laughs> you just be shaking out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the time, at, at the time, you're sweating, but um, I think every time you have to put it into perspective. Mm. It's uh, so, the, you know, it keeps us grounded. Um, you know, you're dealing with people and you're on the other side of the world, and that, you know, that could feel like an obstacle. Mm. Find a way to overcome it find common ground and figure it out so go go on go a question though oh, before yeah. your question then you go yeah you go <laughs> <laughs> I know what they're just like no no they go on then they go on then how did it end up at All Star Weekend like last year <laughs> yeah oh was... they, they dropped us to, back to us yesterday and I was like huh yeah it did this, I was at work here then someone just comes and slaps me on the back I'm thinking who's like who knows me here and it's him the mad ones too. Um, that All Star Weekend. Um, you know what's mad about that All Star Weekend? Of all the All Star Weekends, to to go to that one in Utah. Oh, that was last year's one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Utah. Got the worst like, one. I I've never been, so I can't say it's the worst one. I'm just saying Utah. It's like it's not a place that I never. The way American, the way American fans. So the way they describe it, when you use our yeah. one, when the one that the media were looking forward to, for instance, in, I, I, you yeah. get multiple wives out there, but. In yeah, terms of all star, we can. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, 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 you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, why do you know this? <laughs> it's because of my mum, you know. Uh, you know, they'll watch like these channels like TLC yeah, and they'll have like sister wives or something like that. Okay. Or them crazy, that's how I know, them oh, crazy channels. Pizza. Yeah, yeah, they live around there. Don't blame me on that. That's how I was saying. How does he do Nah, I mean. Uh, no disrespect to Utah. I just know, like I never planned it to ever go to Utah. Pop- yeah. so it's not my, it's not my listen, radar. Listen. Also, they've got some crazy rules around alcohol, so it's not a place that we're like, right, let's go and do business there because it's quite hard to sell alcohol in Utah. But anyway, oh. that aside, mm. um, how do we end up at All Star Weekend? It's random. So, um, can't remember where I was before. I think I was in. I think I was in. Um, yeah, that's what it was. So we were already going to be in America at that time, just doing one of our distribution trips, going and um, just selling. Um, Chris was in San Francisco. I was in, 
think I was in LA at the time. We do you know, did the the business trip mm -hmm. that was done. Um, but uh, our um, our investor, he is involved, you know, informally with you know people that are also involved in the NBA. Mm -hmm. um, and he was going to All Star Weekend, and he's like, "Are you guys in town?" Uh, I'm just a couple of states away. Do you want to? Do you want to? You want to come? All right, play. So Chris actually, so Chris um, played college basketball, high school, and then college basketball. All oh, right. Um, and then was like an international NBA agent for a little time. So he he's like mad into he's yeah. like rad into basketball. Ooh, I'm we too have to, to get him. one. Like, like, yeah. it's, not my, it's, not, it's not my forte. Um, so he was gassed about it. I was like, yo, this is. You know, once a lifetime kind of thing. So yeah, we we got invited by um, our investor uh, Robbie Robinson. He's a great guy, and um, yeah, kind of flew out, landed in Utah, and it's a yeah, it's a beautiful place. Mm. You land and you see these mountains, like just it's it's, it's such a surreal it's such a surreal place. But anyway, the mad thing about it was NBA was All Star Weekend, Utah. We haven't really booked to be there, so we land. All the people that were around, they're in nice places. Mm. <laughs> All Star Weekend, every single hotel was booked on mad expenses. Yeah. We end up in. I mean, I, I, there was a tight point. I was like, "Am I going to make it out alive?" <laughs> this hotel, man. I opened the window. He's, you know, like mm. you know, uh, coming to America. That scene, and they go to the and they go to that um uh, the 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 apartment, mm -hmm. and they open the door and they see like the the outline, the body outline, and the, I see a rat <laughs> running through the. Mm -hmm. That's what that hotel was like. I open Jeez. the windows, and literally it's just a brick wall right like like there. Oh right, mm. so no fresh air. So <laughs> those, those things come from real things, yo. And then the mad thing was, I was like, okay, fine, we're only here for like literally 40, 48 hours and we're out so it's like we're not about to spend like mad money to 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 stay in a nice hotel it's not worth it mm -hmm. fortunate to be here go go and watch a couple of games or all that and then we're in this mad hotel and that same night i had a nosebleed like a bad one as well because i get nosebleeds every now and again and yeah same i was gonna say you used to yeah <laughs> family thing yeah. It's in the D, but yeah, and I remember like bleeding now, and I'm thinking that hotel room looking like a murder seat anywhere. Then they see like <laughs> blood on the. I'm oh, like, uh, anyway, literally, I had to get out of that joint. I was, it was, and I didn't think I was gonna make it out alive. But anyway, that's how I ended up at All Star Weekend. It was amazing, though. It was amazing. We went yeah. to went to some cool stuff. There was the um, went to uh, 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 like NBA Africa dinner. That was mad. Um, and then a couple of parties where there was like all of, all of those people there, and then um, what's his name? Adam Adam Silva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He did this thing, it? Yeah, yeah. He he did this thing. He was like right there. Um, uh, did you see any of the players? Not any of the current players. Mm. But, um, briefly, Shikazu, um, uh Carmelo Anthony, Cheese. Um, and then actually Chris met him a couple of months afterwards um, and they went out for a, a, like a, a He's big out. on wine as well. Yeah, yeah, because he, yeah, exactly. So he's, he's got a wine brand. Yeah, uh, brand. Wasn't last year's All-Star Weekend the uh, 75th yeah. year anniversary? Yeah. Yeah. Was it years before? Year before when they were in Cleve. Ah, he was joined up there. What's big as yeah. well. Yeah, so I met, met a couple of um, interesting people. Um, the, the, uh, the GM of the Raptors. Um, he's a really nice guy. Oh, Hassan Ujiri. Yeah, yeah. He's a really nice Hassan? Masai. Oh. Masai, yeah. Masai, Masai, yeah. Masai, yeah. Masai, yeah. Masai, yeah. Masai, yeah. Masai, yeah. I thought it was Hassan, you know. Yeah, right. But he's a, ni he's a nice guy. Um, I think he, I swear he grew up in England or I might be wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was in England for a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah or yeah, yeah, lived yeah. there for a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a funny guy. And um, yeah, a few other people. So it was a, it was a it was a great experience. It was a great experience, and nice. you know we were lucky to be there. Um, but uh, yeah, as as a non basketball fan, I was just there for the vibes. Yeah, that's <laughs> what most people are there for. I mean, I try to yeah, 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 for that kind of weekend, yeah. most people that get invited, yeah, sure. of course, because the game isn't great. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, we 
we left before the before the the actual All Star game. So you left before the Sunday. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. We're, we're out. Saw so, saw so, like two games, um, but yeah, left before the big one. Mm, perfect. Mm. What was your question, Jago? Yeah, what I wanted to ask: we you've obviously got this this alcohol brand, alcohol brand spirit spirits, but we haven't always. You're a serial entrepreneur, so we haven't touched on. You're an you're also an author. Yeah, that was that was also random. That one is <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, the book. Yeah, yeah, you're also an author, so we haven't actually touched on that. Let me see the book actually. And uh, obviously, how to build it, grow your brand. How did yeah. th- how did this come about? So, I'm I'm you know what my life is full of blessings. My life is full of blessings and amazing people. Um, so I remember actually I was at the office, um, and my like, what well, the Co-author of the book, Niran Vinod, amazing guy. Yeah, shout out Niran. Niran is is uh, I call it a rainmaker. So he takes me, um, and he something like, yeah, have you had a murky before, like murky books or murky for like, yeah, 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 of course. I thought you and Niran go back cool. You know what, Niran and I go back a good ten years, maybe more. Mm-hmm. Um, he used to run a blog called Yin and Yang um, and he, he is was a photographer mm-hmm. and I was but like proper into photography um, so around 2012 properly into photography and then I wanted to um, start doing like curation exhibiting work um, and I had I put together a show that was at the box park um, so if you go onto the top floor of the box park you see that they've got like a little runway corridor thing which, got, which box got? Uh, the Shoreditch one. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So 2012, the um, Olympic year. So I was like, I want to do I want to do an exhibition. I'm going to pull together like um, London-based photographers and also writers. So uh, the idea was to get writers and poets to, you know, write something based on their London experience mm-hmm. and use that as a brief for, for, for the photographer. So they'll take the piece of writing and in, interpret that in first graphic board. So that was a concept for the uh, exhibition. It happened in the process. I was looking for photographers. Niran was doing the blog at the time. He's a great photographer. I loved his series. It was London 365. So it was like three, 365 days of London uh, through his lens. Um, came across him on the internet, like literally Tumblr. Yeah. I was like, yo, <laughs> love your work. Rah, rah, rah. Um, and he was like big on Twitter and all of that kind of stuff. So basically, we were twi- twi- like Twitter friends. That was it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then um, invited him to participate in in um, in the exhibition, um, and that's how we met. We stayed friends uh, ever since. Um, and then fast forward, I guess would have been almost ten years later. Um, he texted me like, "Have you had a murky? This and that. Um, would you be up for?" writing a book because hmm. we both worked in advertising they were doing a, a how-to series on you know various things one was on how to build a brand they had actually or the commissioning editor um at murky at the time lamara uh prince um she approached niran mm-hmm. and then niran was like well i'm not going to do this by myself um because he's a creative i'm a strategy person yeah it was like who else can get involved so he contacted me i'm like yo as this opportunity, I was like, "Yeah, cool, all right, all right." But so that's that's how that's how this came to be. So a lot of it is just about being in the right place, at the right time, and making use of the experiences that you know I'd collected over the years um, to then put put it together. So we wrote this over the pandemic. It was a first, like we started it before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Then that happened. COVID like was a thing, and then yeah, wrote wrote, wrote it quite quickly, and um, and here we are. When was it published? You know what? That whole time was a blur, so I'm gonna have to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't even know, man. Because it's mad. I actually forgot. Like Dejid mentioned the book to us beforehand, and like towards the end, I was I was gonna say, "Oh, so what's next?" He seemed like he could write a book, and then I remember the book. Sure, yeah, no, that, that was that was that was the first thing I saw. Yeah, that, that was that was sitting in the crib. I was like, "Yeah, you done this as well." Yeah, I brought it along. <laughs> I was, I'm an avid book reader, and then when I saw how to build, it, um, how to like, grow your brand, I said, "Hmm, we have a brand ourselves." You know that I forgot about the book. You know that <laughs> it's easy. It's very forgettable. Don't worry. It's all, no, 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 don't say. Don't say that. that. No, no, no. I tell. I tell you what. I tell you what. And I say this with all humility. It needs a rewrite. Mm. 
because having gone through what we've just gone through, mm. building a brand, yeah, yeah, there's a whole different oh, yeah, you, spin on yeah. this <laughs> that would be like, oh, but actually, the realty is, um, don't do it. There's always time for version yeah. two. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, oh, what are we doing? I, there'll be a disclaimer chapter at the ship. You know. <laughs> Honestly, car go. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy. You d- definitely go, why sometimes? But yeah, no, I really enjoyed doing this. I really enjoyed doing it. It was 2020, by the way. Oh. Would you do another one? Another book? When yeah. You, actually, I, sh- I, shouldn't, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't talk on what I was about to say. Would I do another book like this? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say no, but I think there are new stories that I would like to tell. Okay. Um, that I'm thinking about right now. Nice, nice. Yeah. But yeah, no. I mean, never written before. It was a great experience. It taught, taught us a lot. It's like going back to school mm-hmm. and you're getting your homework back, and it's like red, 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 red. The editor's like, nah, 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 nah. I started getting rah, rah, rah. But oh, well, she's a fantastic. Like Lamara is a G. She is serious. She knows what she's doing. Without her, this wouldn't happen at all. Big up Lamara. Um, yeah. So she's she's she was integral to this. Would I write another book? Yes. It wouldn't be about this kind of stuff. Yeah. I think there's some other things we need to get off our chest. Basically, so. well, what would it be about? Can't tell you. You can't tell. Like, that's basically yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Exclusive. Yo, they try to catch up a problem. I'm gonna slip. Nah, you know what? Nah, yeah, don't, 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 don't. Nah, I've got an idea in my head that it was last summer. I was like, nah, this is this is this is the story I'm gonna tell. And I don't think it's going to be in book form. Um, so yeah, kind of just jotting stuff down at the moment. Listen, if you want an audio version of what you're oh, illustrating, you know, let I me know. To be your you're, you, this man has a has a voice over voice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> someone, someone said that to me yesterday on the phone or the day before. They're like, nah, they're just voice for all this stuff. No, for real, it's ridiculous. They say ASMR. Jeez. I, no, this is a guy that doesn't want to, he don't want to get on the mic. Or even go. Oh, really? Yeah. For real, you? No, I didn't want my face out there, man. Actually, that makes sense. This, this, yeah. Because I want, I want money before the fame. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, you can have both. And then the same time. True. How about that? Yeah, but do you know, do you know what my biggest fear is, yeah? You know when someone coming up to you, yeah? When you don't even want to be disturbed. And be like, oh, like they want your time, but you don't want to give no one your time at that moment. Mm. That's like one of my biggest fears with this thing. Like, just walk past. I know, but you don't want to come across like a like a twat. Yeah, like a mean kind of guy. <laughs> Blessing and a curse. Blessing yeah, and a curse. Yeah, it's true. Everything. Yeah. God will sure get right. to that stage. You go embrace it. Exactly. Like, exactly. It's like, and it will happen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Power of prayer. Get praying. Can't forget that. I got one last thing to ask you. I ask, I ask anyone with a brand, what is your piece of advice for someone starting out a new brand or someone that has a brand in general? Just your advice for someone that has a brand and is trained. Uh, my piece of advice is that you need other people. Can't do it by yourself. Even if you feel like you know everything you need to know in order to get it off the ground, you physically cannot do it by yourself because there are 24 hours in a day and it requires 48, Mm. metaphorically, to make this stuff happen. You're dropping gems. So unless you're willing to, you know, open up and let other people in Mm. to help you build this thing, it's unlikely to happen in the way that you want it to happen. Um, so you need to, you need to find people that are willing to, you know, lock arms and like go to war with you when, you know, things go, go wrong. Um, but also people that you can trust, uh, to develop something that feels like your baby without, without those people, nothing's going to happen unless you're very lucky. But if you look at, I mean, just take Meta, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, as an example, you know, Mark Zuckerberg is a person that we all hear about, mm-hmm. but Sheryl Sandberg was like Mark's right hand person in the like the fast growth of Meta um, at the time. 
was integral to the success of that business. Without her, you know, Meta, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, wouldn't be where it is today. People look at, you know, Zuckerberg and go, I want to be like him. But if he didn't have the grace and say, right, actually, I need someone else alongside me to build this, <laughs> it's not it's not happening the way the way it's happened. So I think a lot of people feel that um, when they have an idea, they embark on this journey, they got to kind of hold it tight they can't let anyone in it's all mine well I don't trust people I don't want to talk about my idea because I think people's always going to steal it mm -hmm. that's the quickest way of suffocating your thing mm. so but I always was there ever a fair factor in any of that process though like or was it like laying people in yeah there's always a bit of um because it's discomfort you come across in the sense that like if you've got it there and there you want to go for it and like get people on board or whoever but like whereas me I might be a bit reserved obviously not speaking in terms of us lot but I might be a bit reserved with who I'm gonna yeah but look, but, but, but look at who you're doing this yeah with. yeah yeah well obviously this you could be here by yourself talking to to air yeah mm, air's uh, good <laughs> <laughs> when you're here together doing this yeah it's better because of that yeah um there's always discomfort when you're kind of bringing people into something that is, you know, dear to you, always. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say one of the, the things I've learned on this journey is that I need to be more trusting of people. Mm. Um, or, or not more trusting, because I do trust people, but less of a skeptic. Okay. Um, because that hinders that process of, you know, bringing the right people in and, you know, giving them the autonomy to do what they do best. And... Um, I think sometimes you can be a little bit too, yeah, skeptical of, of, of people when you're when you're when you're trying to build build a team. So yeah, there's definitely been those moments, but ultimately you then go, "Can I do it? Can I be in that place and do that thing?" <laughs> the answer is no. So I need to, you know, I need to yeah. sit myself down and be like, "Look, this has to go this way. Let's let's make it happen," and then just work. A lot of the work is on yourself as you go through this pro process to kind of unlearn some of the things you've learned um, and kind of correct yourself before you have to be corrected by someone else and just be like, just let it go. <laughs> um, there's a lot of kind of mental struggle on the journey, but ultimately it helps you grow as a person. I think so. Um, that's That's the kind of thing that I think for me has been a great lesson in, in this and uh, I'm grateful for it, really grateful. And we've only just started to be honest. I mean, someone else is, uh, you know, further in the journey will have a different opinion, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for where we are right now, that's 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 what I would say. Yeah, no. Go, go, well, I can, I can ask you questions for days, yeah. But with our show now, let's say two guests, you think will be good for the show? Who would they be? And how would you help us get them on? So the f actually no. Besides Chris, because I want Chris on the show anyway. Yeah. I think it would be great. I think it would be fantastic because he's basketball and we love basketball. Yeah, and you know what? He would have a like. He's when you hear him talk about basketball, he he lights up. This man is passionate about that sport played at a high level um, and he's got a very strong opinion about the state of basketball today so that's definitely <laughs> the conversation needs to be had but um, so I know people that I think that would be good for this show your parents pick one did they been trying to get my dad on listen uh, not for real no worries that, that one would be <laughs> one would parent be. to mind yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that one would be that one would be killer I'd love that I'd love that um and that show would be better, yeah, if the camera wasn't recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're not going like, to say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not going to say nothing. But this is, uh, that's up to you guys. You have to coax. Like, you're, you're a good interviewer, so you've got to coax it out. And, um, like, it can, oh, it's it's true. It can happen. True. Like, that one would be serious. <laughs> you need to do, like, a Father's Day or Mother's Day one where you have them, like, here and you're, you're, you're oh. chatting. That one would be sick. Like, for real. Mm. Um, because the lessons that they learn. Like coming up, Matt, 
compared to what we have to go through now. Like, mm. it's yeah. a different kettle of fish mm. completely. Um, so that that's one. And then, aside from that, the sentimental one, who would be good? Um, you know who would be amazing? Who? Yeah. And that, there's no way I can help you get this person. <laughs> you say the name regardless. We'll try. Joe Budden. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need a podcaster. Joe Budden, you podcast. listen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, Joe, but... Wait, okay. how did you link up with Kenny? Kenny Burns? Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah you know what? So Ken, that one... Do you know who Kenny, Kenny Burns is? I don't. No. I'm surprised you don't. You know everyone. <laughs> yeah, but no. He does music, innit? So he... That, that man has had... He does everything. Mate, he does everything. He's had an amazing career. Like so, Kenny Burns. Actually, Kenny Burns is a top podcaster as well, top media personality. Um, so Kenny Burns got introduced to us by the guys at Uncle Nearest. Uncle Nearest is an American whiskey. Mm-hmm. It's like the fastest growing American whiskey in the history of American spirits, um, led by an incredible woman called F- Fawn Weaver. Um, literally a powerhouse in the I game. I know that name. Yeah, yeah. Fawn Weaver is like a powerhouse in the spirits game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fawn Weaver. Big, yeah. big deal. Um, and it's built an incredible business. Now, we got introduced to Uncle Nearest um, around, a, like, around about way. Met up with a couple of members of um, her team. And even had a chat with her, I remember actually very, very clearly. He spoke to her on the 28th of December, All right. 2019, my mum's birthday. Ah. Chat. So it's actually my dad's birthday tomorrow. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Happy birthday to your mum. Um, yeah, so we got we got introduced to them. Um, and then through those conversations, they're like, we know someone who'd be interested in what you're doing. Kenny Burns because Kenny Burns was also involved in Uncle Nearest um, at the beginning mm. so they introduced us to Kenny Burns Kenny Burns we sent him uh, a bottle of Vusa the old packaging a bottle of Biab he got it he was like oh, I love this love what you guys are doing let me help um, I'm going to introduce you to um, an investor who you know invests in you know black led businesses black founders rah, rah, rah. Mm. so then he introduced us to our investors who then you know invest into the business so it's like wow like past the parcel kind of thing it's so mad it's like the experience of just chatting to people that you never would have thought you'd think like you never would have thought you'd have been speaking to mm-hmm. um but kenny's amazing kenny is one of those people you have a conversation with him and you leave with energy you're leaving <laughs> pipes you're like i'm i'm doing this mm. he's he's got he's got like one an incredible voice incredible kind of um perspective on the world and he's had a great career himself so he you know he was part of the team that helped build the rock back in the day working you know with you know all the people that you know associated with the rock they shall remain nameless <laughs> love that say the name. love that <laughs> um, yeah um, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah he he was integral to 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 the early uh success of the rock um, he's been involved in a lot of like black spirit brands that have grown in the US and he has his own kind of, you know, media property in his own right. Mm-hmm. Um, Does he ever come UK? He hasn't, he, he, he does, he hasn't for, for a while. He was, he, we, we were planning to like bring him over and like spend some time over here. Mm. We would bring him over. He'd come over. We'd hang out with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Guys, yeah. I've arrived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that will happen. Uh, but he's an incredible guy. Like, honestly, without him, this this isn't happening the way it's happened. Mm. 100%. He's, he's like a key part of the journey. Because um, some, sometimes I'll see, like, I'll see your story, yeah? Then you'll be in a spot. Then I'll see, like, Black Fort. And, like, um, what's the guy from The Roots? The guy with the long hair. Oh, Quest Love. That's it. Yeah. I'm thinking, what, what's, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so right. Like, all like, these, like yeah. surrounded, all these, these big stars, yeah, just yeah. in the same spot. I'm just thinking, wow, like. Is there every time you, like, you pinch yourself? It's plugged uh, in, man. At certain moments. Yeah, there have been times. There have been times. Who's been the biggest star you've met? I 
I don't know, you know. I can't really remember. I think it's good like that. So it kind of seems normal. Not even that, I just... I've got a bad memory. (laughs) 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 Um, You know what? Everything moves so quickly and you can't really dwell on things. It's like, you can't really can't really settle on, on moments like that. So I, I definitely need to write things down, remember them and go back. Yeah, damn, that happens. Ah, so how do you celebrate your wins then? Damn, you took my question. Damn. <laughs> Wait, are oh, we for time? Yeah, no, it's fine. No, I was, I was, I was, you get think we are. That was my question in terms of not how, but do you celebrate like your wins or milestones, for instance? No, or probably not. Just no. like... Because we, we spoke about this on an episode like months ago in terms of like, no matter how big or small, celebrate that moment, innit? Mm, like, ob- yeah. One mm. of my first. Like, obviously you'll move on, go on to whatever next thing that you're going to do, but like, appreciate that happy moment, innit? Mm. And do you ever do that? Or is it just like, uh, all right, cool, I've done this. This is next straight away, now. You know what? Um, we probably don't celebrate our wins enough. But one of the most, yeah. so when we, when we raised investment, I remember celebrate like we celebrated that moment big, <laughs> but not in a kind of like lavish yeah, yeah. way. It was like just a thing we cried. <laughs> we're, actually, we sit, we're, we're in New York at the time, me, Chris, um, Bree, who we used to work with, um, and a couple other people sat in um, Sir House, Brooklyn, Dumbo House. It was hot that day. <laughs> hot. And we were like, this investment's going to close like any time now. Mm-hmm. Um, and could you reveal how much it was? Or Yeah, it's on the internet. Oh, okay. It's on the internet. It was like three mil. Hmm. Jesu. Well, no, you know what? Like, to build a spirits business just takes so much damn money. It's yeah. crazy. But, um, and we were very lucky to, to be able to raise that kind of money. But, um, so we don't take for granted at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were sat, sat in Dumbo House, it was a hot day. We were like, you know, doing this off our own backs. So to get to that moment already, it was like, we were happy that we had done enough to demonstrate that this was worth investing in um and at least you know had serious conversations with serious people that you know we weren't just like chances yeah but i remember when we got the phone call that that money had hit the bank account jeez and that that was that was that was mad (laughs) that that feeling you're like yo we did that that's mad. This is about to this this is about to be a thing. Mm-hmm. Um and I remember oh man, that day it was kind of strange because there was a friend of mine who from the UK that was also in New York at the time. So after we finish up in Dumbo House, we then go to a bar. Um, we meet her as well, have a drink, we go to pool pool hall, me, Chris, Bree, Jamie, someone else. Um, play pool I've drunk maybe a little bit too much I sit on this kind of like it's outside the bar I sit on sit on there and I kind of just fall asleep like this get put in a taxi and I'm in the hotel room and I wake up the next day and we're like right let's get to it so we celebrate that win for literally an evening mm-hmm. and then it was like straight to business I think it's just an instinct that you know I certainly have it's get on with it yeah yeah because we haven't done anything yet we have not done anything yet we literally just started so i think for us we'll celebrate when we've done what we set out to do perfect mm. like not to say we're not enjoying it but the celebration will come um i think to do it now would be premature no, you just reminiscing and I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I was seeing it just smiling. I said, that like, I got goosebumps and I said, this is like, you can see the passion, you can see what it feels like. 
Yeah, it was a mad, mad See, experience. It was, it was even nice to, for us to witness you relive that moment. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was so, literally like, <laughs> like <laughs> glass it breaks tears in my eyes. I'm like, oh. even though <laughs> the whole <laughs> interview, cry, the yo. whole interview, you were saying like this, like that, that one, it was like, oh, raw. <laughs> like, <laughs> tell it that for. That, 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 that was, that's wavy, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, life is for for living, but those kind of experiences, I think we'll look back on and be like, that that was that was that was kind of mad. Mm. Um, but yeah, there are lots of other things that happened along the way that I look back on and I'm like, oh, we should have celebrated that. Mm-hmm. This deserved a kind of moment to just be like, okay, we're proud of this. Um, like this doesn't often happen to 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 people, so unless at least like, mm, yeah, go for dinner or something, but. Yeah, you would do, would do celebrate differently. Yeah, 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 no more like falling asleep and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 need to need to switch up, but um, yeah, yeah, it's it's been it's been mad, sick, man. That is sick, mad, Joey. And now we're lucky we have got family that can support us because honestly, we put them through the ringer. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure it's been a mad, mad experience, bro. Yeah, because all throughout all this time, you were still working as well. You still had your job. Yeah, so basically. Stop! Stop doing that when we raise the money, because mm. you, you can't. You can't unless unless there's investment. You can't. You can't suddenly drop everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um. So yeah, it's like the the grind. I'm telling you, the grind is real. Mm. So anyone watching out there, the side hustle is a side hustle until there's money to not make it a side hustle anymore. That's that would be my only piece of advice because the economy is not kind out there right now. Yeah. Stupid. Keep hold. Actually, I, who was it? There's a Christina um, who runs a PR agency. I'll remember the name. I promise. Um, she actually tweeted that, like, keep your nine to five with your side hustle because mm-hmm. that economy is not kind right now. Just hold on to the money that you're making until it's you know until the economy recovers. You know. So yeah, we were we were hustling. Until until that money came in, to be honest, um, extra motivation. No, trust me, love that. Should we go song of the week? Do we? I don't know if we have time for song of the week. To be honest, mm-hmm. is it? Man, I've been talking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guys. I nah, guys. trust me. No apologize for I this. Apologize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get me, but yeah. Now nah, I guess we could wrap it up then. Yes, yes. Now nah, it's been a great conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah as it has inspiring. Like very what you what you've implemented in this conversation will take with us, and I guarantee the people that are watching will take with them, hundred percent. And honestly, we'll have you back anytime because I know you got a lot more gems to drop in. You know what? I'll yeah, I feel like time. this is like just uh, this is the just to start. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. There's there's a lot more to say, but honestly, your insert, yeah, like I just always try to nitpick. Like one thing I don't know about DC, but. A lot of our episodes, I rarely go back and watch unless we need to. Mm. But the ones, this one I'm watching. the ones with the guests is the one that I'll, I'll watch back. Whereas Osprey, we only watch back for certain things. But with the guests... Yeah, don't worry, you guys drop gems as well. Exactly. I, enjoy, I, enjoy, I enjoy hearing your conversation because one, it's conversation between friends is honest. And I think it's, it's, it's funny as well. But at the same time, like you learn mm. you know, about the different experiences you've had. Especially when you talk about sport. That one is... Because... That perspective, I think, is interesting. You've got a lot of podcasts that, like, they're a sports podcast, and that's what they do. Mm-hmm. We, you're not a sports podcast just doing sports. But you've got incredible opinions and insight into in, into that side of things. So, yeah, we we need a sports person on the on the on the podcast next. No, well, no. We need the it's in the works. <laughs> it's, in, it's in the works. <laughs> it's, it's in the works. Yeah, you know, for real, like, listen, that one. If you can get the insights out of them, because I love like. You see when you hear like Thierry Henry talk about football. Mm-hmm. And like I, I never looked at it like that. Before. Yeah. Like when he does the CBS thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's more loose on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The but analysis, this, the breakdown. Exactly. And that that's what I love. Mm. And I see that, I'm like, wow, oh, okay, that's interesting. Cause you just watch the sport. You don't think of yeah. if you're not an athlete, you're not thinking about it that way. But yeah, you need you need you need to. Don't to worry, we'll get to your own real as well. But let's have a boom when you're ready. You'll <laughs> Trust me. Yeah, me. But I damlo very much appreciate you, you coming to join us and sharing one your knowledge, most of all the important part, and two, this fantastic product products that you have. 
It seems yeah, like we found our new drink sponsor moving yeah, yeah. forward. <laughs> you need boost in your life. Like, I, I don't know about that. I, you need, need boost in your life. life. Yeah, you need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, you want me to do your promo, man? <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll do it each and every time, you know. Yeah, That's right. right. Don't worry, I got you. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I was saying, very much appreciate you coming on. Um, big up you and Chris on this again. And your whole team, like, this is absolutely fantastic. And you're representing the continent. Like, I don't want you guys to take that lightly. Like, there isn't like, many. Bro, <laughs> there really isn't. And just even you talking about certain things in terms of, like, the trees, for instance, or, like, the sugarcane aspect, et cetera. Yeah, bow, bow. Bro, I'm like, shit. Like, I would never, obviously, it's not really in my realm, but I would never think of that, that kind of stuff or... You saying Algarve is also in Africa. Like, all I've known is Mexico, for instance. Do you know what I mean? So, bro, absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, you so much appreciate. Um, yeah, Dej, Dej likes to say. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Jacob. Like and subscribe. Also, I've got three Man United fans around me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a heavy week. It's been me. a bad week. But that like, and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> thank you very much but yeah Appreciate thank you very much guys for always tuning in definitely tune into this I, I will spam everyone that i know for this particular episode especially get me and um, we love and appreciate everything that you guys do in terms of like the comments feedback the sharing and everything and yeah it's another fantastic episode so joe signing out dej signing out jacob signing out double life signing out Gee, there you go. One take. Thank you for listening. We saw! <laughs> <laughs>